I have two oboes here, a student and a professional, and we'll switch back and forth between them a little bit. We'll only be dealing with problems common to both, but because the mechanism on the student oboe is simpler, it's a little easier to see some of the things we'll be discussing. But first, let's talk about the reed. When you're done playing and before putting your reed away, gently squeeze the sides to open the tips slightly, and then blow through the bottom of the reed to clear out any excess moisture. Wipe the tip dry before placing it in the case. If you're concerned about keeping your reed clean, you can occasionally soak it in a cup of hydrogen peroxide, only up to the string. You don't want to soak the cork. Soak it for at least five minutes and then rinse it thoroughly under running water before using it. While hydrogen peroxide is effective against a wide range of viruses and bacteria, it's not 100% effective against everything, so if you're really concerned about what might be living in your reed, it's best to replace it. If you keep a cup of water on hand to soak your reeds in, make sure you change it out frequently. The most effective way to clean the instrument itself is to swab it out when you're done playing. Make sure to use swabs specifically designed for oboes and be aware that there are several different types of oboe swabs. First, a swab like this one that's specifically designed to be pulled all the way through the upper joint will be very narrow in order to fit through the opening at the top. The bore at the very top of your oboe is only about as wide as the bottom of your reed so a standard swab won't fit through there. If you use a swab like this, make sure it's double-ended, meaning it has a string coming out of both ends, one from the top and one from the bottom. <clears throat> that string at the bottom will allow you to pull the swab back out if it gets stuck in the joint. Before swabbing, check the swab and the string for any knots. If the swab should become stuck in the upper joint, don't tug on it. Simply use that bottom string to pull it back out. Never attempt to pull a stuck swab out through the top of the joint and never put anything else in the instrument to try to fish it out. If you're unable to pull the swab out either direction, take it to a technician right away. The second type of swab would be one designed specifically for the lower joint and the bell. It'll be bigger than an upper joint swab so that it can make good contact with the entire bore as you pull it through. Again, inspect the swab and the string for knots before pulling it through. You can usually swab the lower joint and the bell together while they're assembled. Finally, the third type of swab would be one that's designed to pull part way through the upper joint and then back out the bottom. <clears throat> this swab appears comically large because it's designed for swabbing the entire oboe while it's assembled and then pulling back out the bottom. So you pull it until it's tight and then back out the other way. As you pull through, just be careful of the weight you don't want to scratch anything up as it's coming out. After using any type of swab, look down the bore. If the bore still looks wet, swab it again until it appears dry. If it looks like there's buildup in the bore, especially in the upper joint, take it to a technician to have them disassemble and clean the instrument. If your swab itself starts to look funky, you can throw it in the wash with, in a delicates bag and wash it with the rest of your laundry. <clears throat> You might also use a feather to clean your instrument, which can work fine, but just make sure you replace your feather regularly because feathers tend to break down over time. If you keep it in your case, the pieces that shed off can get into the mechanism of your instrument. The other best practice to adopt for instrument cleanliness is to wash your hands before and after you play. For some people, the oils in their hands can cause premature wear or corrosion of the mechanism, but for the rest of us, it's just good to avoid getting any foreign dirt or contaminants on your instrument. Other things you can do to keep your instrument clean are to wipe down the exterior, especially if you've been playing outside on a hot day or under the lights of a stage and your hands are sweaty. Just use a clean, lint-free cloth and be careful of the pads as you go. Always wipe away from the pads. There's no need to use any sort of cleaning products or polish here, although you could use an impregnated polishing cloth, but again, just be aware not to scuff the pads as you go. Always wipe away from the pads. Keeping your instrument clean can help the pads last longer because they're less likely to collect and hold water, and in some cases it can prevent rust or other corrosion from developing in the mechanism. 
Now let's talk about a few common problems that you can diagnose and fix at home. If your oboe has lost a tenon cork, or a piece of cork has broken off, don't attempt to re-glue it. Just take some masking tape or painter's tape and wrap it around the tenon, as I've done here. <clears throat> grease it with cork grease, and that can last anywhere from a few days to a few weeks. On to issues with the mechanism itself. If you press the thumb octave key and find that notes don't jump up the octave like they should, check to see if this pad is sticking to its vent, as this one is. The pad's not lifting up when I push that lever. If it is, as a temporary fix, you can pull a piece of cigarette paper or even a dollar bill between the pad and the tone hole to break up some of the debris that may be causing it to stick. So open the pad, place that paper in there, gently press down on it, and pull the paper out. There we go, it's better. You can also use something like this, which is similar in consistency to a dryer sheet. This works really well because the woven texture seems to collect deposits from the surface of the pad and the vent. Uh, this was given to me by another tech, Jan Bunetta from Toronto, and I'm trying to find out from him what exactly it is. If I can, I'll post that in the description below. I believe it's a non-woven polyester sheet, but I'm not sure. Uh, it's not a dryer sheet, so don't use a dryer sheet in that situation. The only way to permanently fix a sticky pad is to replace it and to remove and clean the vent, which is the metal part here that the pad contacts. That should be done by a technician, so get this to a technician as soon as you can to permanently correct that problem, otherwise it will likely return. Another mechanical issue would be related to the bridge key here. If you find that notes in your left hand, especially B and A, are fuzzy, or if your B comes out as a C and A comes out as a B flat, that could indicate that the bridge key is being held up, which will cause these two small keys on the upper joint to get stuck open. Put the instrument together, and inspect the bridge key where it connects. If you're not pressing any keys, there should be a small gap right here between these two parts. And as you can see, there is a small gap there. When I press on the F sharp key here, there's a little bit of travel before it contacts the bridge. That's what we want. If there's no gap, or in other words, if these two pieces are in contact with each other, one of them may have gotten bent and that could be the source of your problem, holding these two keys open. Unfortunately, on this oboe, there's no way to correct that without bending this key back and that's tricky and should only be done by a technician. However, on some oboes, such as this one, there will be an adjustment screw here to adjust that gap. Simply tighten that screw, quarter turn at a time, until you get a gap here. And you can see that there's a nice gap there. It's probably a little bit more than we need, but it'll get the job done. On that note, all of the bridge keys should have gaps. So that one we just discussed, and also the trill bridge key, which is on the other side of the main body. You can see there's a little gap there. That's what we want. And if your instrument has a bell key, there should be a gap there as well. This gap is, is small, maybe a little tough to see. And you can see that there's a screw here uh, contacting the, the upper bridge but there's a little gap between the bridge and that screw, and that's what we want. While you're checking out the bridge keys, also check to make sure that both of these bridge keys line up together. If one is aligned, the other one should also be aligned. If you can only line up one of them and the other is off, that's an indication that something has gotten bent and it should be seen by a technician. Looking at an issue that can come up with the lower joint, if your low C's start coming out as C sharps, or they just feel fuzzy, could be because this spring on the C-sharp mechanism has popped out of its cradle. I'll do that just so you can see what it looks like. Now when I play C-sharp, that key can flop open and hang open. It should be engaged at the far side of the cradle from this view. If it has popped out, you can rehook it with a tool like you just saw me use, a spring hook, or a crochet hook, or the tip of a precision screwdriver will work or even just your thumbnail. 
Whatever you do, just be careful as you're exerting force on that spring so that you don't slip off and damage any part of the mechanism or any of the pads. The last mechanical issue we'll look at concerns this arm between the F-sharp and G-sharp keys. If you find that you're suddenly unable to play any notes in the right hand but the left hand works just fine, this is a good place to check. Because this arm sticks out beyond the end of the lower joint, it can easily get caught and bent as you're assembling the instrument or it can snag on a piece of clothing or it can just bump up against something. If it gets bent down, it will contact the G-sharp key too soon and prevent the F-sharp key from closing, causing a leak that will then affect everything below that on the instrument, the, the rest of the lower joint. If you can clearly see that the F-sharp isn't closing or just suspect that that's the problem, back this screw out one full turn and then check to see if that's helped. We also, though, don't want to have a gap between this screw and the G-sharp key when the F-sharp is down. And you can see that there is a gap there. So we'll go back a little bit. It's important that there not be too much of a gap there because that adjustment controls your G-sharp to F-sharp trill. If the screw is out too far, you won't be able to play that trill. If it's in too far, you won't be able to play F-sharp or anything below that. It's a bit of a balancing act, as are most adjustments on an oboe. In some cases, if this arm is severely bent, it won't be possible to fix the problem by backing that screw out, because the barrel itself will hit the key. The, the barrel is the part of the key that the screw is inside. Because the mechanism on an oboe is so intricate and complex, there are a lot of issues that can arise, and it's difficult to diagnose or repair many of them without a thorough understanding of the mechanism. If your oboe is in good working order, the best thing you can do is to spend a few minutes with it studying the mechanism. Which keys close which other keys, and where do they connect? Are there screws to adjust those relationships, or just pieces of silencer material glued onto the key? If you can understand how the instrument works before it breaks, you'll be in a better position to at least diagnose problems even if you aren't able to fix them. I hope you found this information helpful, but if you have further questions or encounter an issue that I didn't cover here, please reach out and I'll do whatever I can to help you. My contact information should be appearing at the bottom of the screen right now. Stay safe and thanks for watching.